Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today, I am so excited to share this video with you for two reasons really. One, this is the coolest card I've ever made. I know I said that once before with my airplane cards, and at the time that was true, but this card, this card literally takes the cake. <laughs> Inside, there's a pop-up cake, three tiers pop up, and at the top there are candles, and the candles actually light up. How cool is that? Like, seriously? This, this is my favorite card now. <laughs> uh, the other reason I'm really excited to share this video with you is because it's part of a collaboration hop between myself and Karen Berniston. She makes the most incredible pop-up dies. Uh, if, it's the, if anything twists or pivots or pops up, Karen has a die for it. So make sure that you hop along with us. We've gathered up a whole bunch of fantastic designers that are gonna share a lot of inspiration for cards that both pop up and light up. And in addition, we've got some prizes to be won and discount codes and all the good stuff that's all uh, in the blog post that I've got linked down below, plus all the details. So let's talk about my card. Um, Whenever I get a new set of dies from Karen, the first thing that I like to do is just go ahead and cut them out of some scrap paper, just pull stuff out of the recycle bin. And that just helps me assemble it and wrap my head around how all the pieces are gonna go, plus orientation. You know, if I wanna cut it from pattern paper, I wanna know which is the top. Once I've got that done, then I can go ahead and cut out my good paper. And for this card, I've got a card base, some pattern paper that's going to decorate the front, and a strip of vellum, and then also some more pattern paper on the inside. And I am leaving a gap between my two pieces of striped paper when I close that up. That'll just help the card fold flatter. We're going to use my easy lights to light up the candles. And then I've got a whole slew of dies that I'm using from Karen Berniston. Now the main ones are the cake pop-up die set. So I went ahead and cut out all of my cake pieces. Notice I went from light to dark cardstock. And then I cut out all of my scallops from some glitter cardstock. I also went ahead and cut out some candles. The candles are from white, uh, white cardstock. And then I have three more out of vellum. And I decided that I wanted icing to go not just the scallops on the side, but also on the top part of my cake. So I came back with some more of that uh, glitter cardstock and I just partially die cut some pieces so that they will fit onto the tops of the cake and butt up right against those scallop pieces. I thought that would be cute and a fun little twist on this cake. I'm also going to decorate with these uh, word set uh, dies here. This is word set two birthday and I went ahead and I cut out three each of happy birthday and two each of make a wish and I want to show you this is really cool. The eyes, the dots on top of the eyes, they're actually connected so you can totally read it but you don't have to worry about losing those little dots. I really love it. Um, I also wanted to add some little critters to my card so I cut out some hedgehogs. I cut out a pair of the bodies, a pair of the bellies, and a pair of the fur pieces. And then uh, for a little more decoration, I'm gonna use the snowman twist circle. It's got this cool little scallop circle frame. And then I also cut a uh, pattern paper and a vellum piece to go uh, inside. They just nest inside those circles. So I'm gonna use that to cover up my battery pack. Now, speaking of the battery pack, right over the button, I wanna stamp push here. So I'm gonna use that heavy doodle set. And again, I'm using the easy lights. So it's, it's very simple to do. Now I'm not going to walk you through all of the decorating of this card. I'll just go through a little bit here and I want to show you with the critters the dies are really cool. You cut them out and then the die itself acts as a stencil so you can add in little details with ink like I'm using a, a pen here and I'll um, add a little bit of um, ink with my makeup brush here too and that'll just color those in. You can also run it through your die cutting machine with um, the little silicone or the, the squishy pad and that will emboss the features too. So I think this is a really cool little feature that Karen's Critter Dies all have. And then I want to share uh, one more tip for the glitter paper here. If you don't have the right color like I didn't, I wanted this to be the same teal that my card base is, um, I'm going to just go ahead and use a couple of my uh, blue-green markers. They're Copics. The alcohol ink works perfect on them, but I'm being careful to just pounce on top of the paper. I'm not actually scribbling because I don't want to um, tear up the nibs of my markers there. So that's just a little tip if you want to get any color 
glitter paper, you can use alcohol markers for it. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of color to my candles. I want to just add yellow flames to the tops of all of them. And if you missed it before, I have three vellum pieces and then I cut out 16 candles. I, I'm going to have 13 candles on the finish card, but I'm going to use three of them to layer up. Um, so three of them I don't need to add stripes to yet. And I'll just add stripes to the other pieces. And then I'm going to take three of those striped ones and I'm going to cut off the flames because I'm going to glue them onto the vellum pieces. Um, eventually I'm going to sandwich the lights underneath the vellum. And so I want the light to shine through the vellum rather than through the white cardstock. It'll just uh, allow more light to, to come through. So I'll do that for all three of those guys because those are going to sit on top of my cake. And then we can start playing with the cake layers. When you die cut the pieces, it will also emboss the score lines for you, which is super handy. And I'm just gonna grab the top layer. You, you cut out two pieces for each one. So for the top layer, I've got two of these light blue pieces and every fold is gonna fold away from you except the little arch at the top, that little semicircle is gonna pop up, but every other fold on all three layers is gonna push down. It'll be a mountain fold, so you, you push it away from you. And you'll see as you're playing with it, it, it comes together very easily. It might look confusing at first, but as you're actually you know, touching it, it, it comes together fast. And while I'm folding these, I thought it would be a good time to glue on my icing pieces it's just easier while you can hold it flat. But I do want to make sure that I, I bend those, those folds so that I can make sure the icing fold or sits where I want it to. And using the wet glue, I'm using PVA glue in a fine line bottle. Using that wet glue allows me to slide the pieces around a little bit before it sets. So I'm just going to glue on those icing strips and the, the pieces for the top of the cake. Mm -hmm. And I'm repeating the process for the second side. And I just want to kind of snug up those pieces next to each other. And again, you know, test those folds, make sure that the icing folds nicely. And I'll just pinch these two pieces together here. And you can kind of get an idea how the top of the cake is going to come together. See that? The little arch, those two pieces are the only two that stick up and we'll eventually glue the candles onto that. Now for the second tier, I'm gonna just repeat the process. This time there is no arch, so every single fold is gonna go down. You just kinda fold them all underneath. And then we'll glue on our icing pieces here again. And I'm not gluing this together yet because when we do start gluing the layers together, we're gonna sandwich the candle um, the lights in between. So I just want to get the icing on here and, and really work all my folds first. So that's all I'm doing. And it actually, it takes a few minutes because there's two pieces for each layer, but it's very simple. On a scale of one to 10, I would say that this card is probably, probably a five, maybe even a four, especially if you do the little test run first out of scrap paper, because once you do it the first time, it, it just becomes very simple. So I'll repeat the process here with the second half of my middle tier, and then I'm going to pinch them together for you again so you can just see what I'm doing here, how that piece will come together. Now for the, the bottom layer, there's an extra little notch in the center, and it actually has two fold pieces, or, or two fold lines, so it, it's scored in two spots. And that middle piece will come underneath and provide a, a support for the cake itself when it's flat. Here's the second fold there. So you see that? Kind of just it gives a little extra support to that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and glue my frosting pieces on here again, just doing the same thing. And then I'll work those folds. And there are notches. Notice that the there's notches on the bottom and the center 
uh, layers. That's so that the pieces above can slip in there. So when you cut them out of the glitter paper, you're going to want to make sure that those notches line up exactly with the, um, the bottom piece. And we're just gonna repeat the process for the second half of the bottom tier here. Just every single fold is gonna go away from you, push down, and then we'll glue on the icing again. And it's pretty repetitive, but it's, it's simple. And I didn't wanna cut this out because I wanted you to see the, what I'm doing. I did speed it up quite a bit, but I wanted you to see it all. And also Karen has a fantastic video on her uh, YouTube channel that goes through it a little bit slower. And so if, if you're missing anything here, you can always check it out there. Okay, so this is kind of pinched together how the bottom layer is going to fit together. And now that we've got the pieces all folded and we've got the icing glued on, we can start assembling. So I'm going to bring in my easy light. If you haven't seen these before, um, they're actually really cool. <laughs> my husband and I uh, have made these. It's three lights at the end of uh, wires and then you can just put the wires wherever you want them. You can glue them down or tape them down and then glue your battery where you want it and it's good to go. My idea for this is to sandwich it between the, the white candles and the vellum candles so that uh, the light shines through. And we're going to put those on the top layer of the cake. Now notice those little arches stick up. I kind of want to hide those arches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white candles and I'm going to glue them to the back of the arch on one layer of the top piece of cake. And I do, you could use a tape runner if you wanted, but I do like the wet glue for this. I've found that wet glue tends to hold up better in the long run. Some of my old samples have fallen apart where, when I've used tape runners. So I've pretty much switched to the PVA glue. It dries quickly, it dries clear, and it, it's my go-to for paper to paper. And in the fine line bottle, I can really control how much comes out and exactly where it comes out at. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those candles glued down. Do notice that, that I was pinching them um, together and I was making sure that the candles are above the fold on that little blue arch that sticks up. If they stick down below that, you would have a problem folding up your cake later. And then I'm going to use some tacky glue and I'm going to glue the lights down. You could use scotch tape for this. In fact, I, I normally do, but because these candles are skinny, I wanted to just use some, some tacky glue here. It dries quickly. I did stick a, a little block on it and I'm only doing one candle at a time just so that it, they don't pop off. You, you wouldn't want one to get on. And then when you put on the second one, the first one pops off. So I did do them one at a time and let them set up for about a minute or so in between. Once they are glued on, we can grab the second layer of the cake, or I'm sorry, the second half of the top tier. So I'm still working on the top, top layer of the cake. And I'm just gonna add some glue to the center tab, and then also that little arch that sticks up. And I'm just gonna line the pieces up and they just sandwich on top of each other. And I'll kind of pinch them, make sure that it's lined up. I also wanna make sure that my wires are coming through the bottom center. And then because it's kind of chunky there with the wires, I did grab some of the tacky glue just for that little spot. Either glue would work really, but the, the tacky glue is a little more textured so it grabbed a little more. And then I can go ahead and I'm gonna flatten it out. I'm gonna tuck one side underneath and then I'm gonna glue it. And I'm only gluing the one side right now because before we glue the other side, we wanna make sure that we pop it up. So you want it in the, the popped up position when you add glue to the other side. And you're gonna kind of pinch it um, in the popped up position. When it's popped up, it, it's a little bit bigger around the edges than if it's folded flat. You don't want it too tight 
because then it won't pop up and down. So, so do add the glue when it's in the popped up position for these. Once we've got that all glued together, we can put the vellum candles on top. And tweezers are handy if you're going to line up small pieces like this. So I'm just using more of that PVA glue right on top. And if you've seen some of my videos before where I make light up cards, a lot of times I will use foam tape and kind of make a gap between the vellum and the light to diffuse the light through the vellum a little bit more. This is such a small area, you don't need to. You can just glue it right on top, it's no problem. So now we can bring in the second tier of our cake. And the little notch that, that sticks down off the top layer is gonna go right through, or I'm sorry, the tab goes right through the notch and then I'm going to use a little piece of scotch tape to secure it. It fits very snug. You really don't need to, but just in case, I, I put a little scotch tape in there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can see it's starting to really come together here. And now I'm going to make sure that those uh, wires are in the very center. Oh, sorry, I need to add the scotch tape to the other side. <laughs> getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so now I'll kind of pop it back up here, get a feel for it. And then I'm going to make sure that those wires are in the center and I'm gonna add glue all around, along the tab on the insides. And I am making sure to get glue all the way to the top of that tab. You wanna make sure that those two pieces come together as completely as possible, especially at the top, because that gives you a nice strong base and it allows the top layer to, to really stand up tall. So make sure you get glue all the way across the center. And then I opened it up and then I added a little bit of glue to the one side and then I can close it up and pinch it. You do wanna make sure that you're overlapping it when it's in the popped up position, just like this. Then you pinch it, hold it for a second and then you can collapse it if you want and really push down some more. So now we've got two layers of cake and I realized that I wanted uh, color on the back of those white candles. So I just colored them in real quick with my markers. And now we can bring in the third tier. So it's gonna come together pretty much the same way. The tab is gonna go through the notch. I'm gonna use a little more scotch tape to secure them. And it really is a tight fit. You, you can skip the scotch tape step with most of your cardstock as long as it's fairly thick. But I didn't want it to pull out just in case. This card is actually my daughter's 13th birthday card. That's why I have so many candles. I want 13 candles on the finished card. Only three of them are going to light up. But um, since I was going to give it to her and I knew she'd probably play with it a lot, which she did, I gave it to her for her birthday the other day and she loved it. Um, but since I knew she'd probably play with it a lot, I wanted to really reinforce it here. And so once I have the tape in place, I'm going to glue the two outer flaps that are inside. That sounds weird, right? Outer flaps on the inside. They're inside of the cake on the outside edges. But those center pieces, I'm not gluing them yet. And again, you want to make sure that you get glue all the way up to the top, up to the white icing pieces there, so that you get a nice strong base for it to stand on. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue the sides together. And again, I'm overlapping them in the popped up position. I don't want to pull too tight. I want it to, to be able to go up and down easily. So I'm kind of testing it as I go and I can, you know, squeeze it some more, make sure the glue's dry. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side, pop it back up. And then add the glue and overlap those pieces there. And then underneath those little skinny tabs, this is where they come into place. They come and wrap around from the underneath and they form almost a little box. And that's gonna give you something for the cake to actually sit on and glue to the inside of your card. The, it, it's gonna make basically a T-shape here. So the bottom of the cake has a long skinny flap and then it's got the, 
the little tiny pieces that are coming up and over. And those don't need to be glued together in the popped up position. But you can see, I'm testing the folds again here, but I'll show you the bottom in just a second here. See those little boxes? That's what you're gonna glue to the bottom of the card. And now we've got it all lit up. Isn't that cool? <laughs> You guys, I was so happy when I had this made. I was just wanting to play with it. Okay, so now I'm not going to show you the whole decorating of the card. Um, I'm just going to show you how I get it in here. I'm going to bring in the first piece of striped paper and glue it straight to the top. And then I'm going to glue the, the cake just to the top half of my card. So I folded it flat, and then that little T area is the only place that's gonna get glue right now. And you're gonna squeeze it and hold it and make sure that it's in the right spot. And now we need to mark a spot, because we, we need to hide those wires. So I'm gonna mark a little slit underneath where the cake sits, and I'm gonna cut it out. I'm just gonna cut a slit, and I need to cut another slit over on the side to bring the battery pack back through. So see, I cut those slits. I'm gonna slide the battery through and then back through again. And then now we can pull all the wires underneath and it hides them. And for the battery itself, there, there's a battery and a switch. I do wanna use some double stick tape, a really strong one here. I could use glue as well, but since it would be kind of a big blob of glue. I thought it would take a long time to dry. Uh, so I just grabbed some of my super tape there. It is nice and strong. And I glued the battery down. And then I'm gonna fold the paper up on top of the cake. And I'm just gonna grab those extra wires and I kind of curled them up. This is just, you don't have to do this. This is just to make it look cleaner underneath. Not that anybody will ever see it, but yeah, I. I like it. <laughs> um, and then now I'm just gonna add some glue around the edge of the pattern paper here. And then we can close up the card and that will get everything all lined up where it needs to be. See that? And that, that little gap between the, the two pieces of striped paper really does help this card come fold flatter. Okay, so now the last little thing to do is attach the other half of the cake. So there's, there's that little T piece, and I'm just adding glue to that. And then I can go ahead and kind of close up this card and make sure that it grabs it in the right spot. And I squeezed it for a minute. I didn't want to make you watch all of that. But I, I squeezed it to make sure it was good and stuck down. And then that's, that is the hard part. The only thing left to do is decorating. I did go ahead and cover up that the button with um, the push here stamp and that circle is actually uh, pop popped up with a double layer of foam tape. So you can see I got all the rest of my candles and my hedgehogs on there. And I just love how this card turned out. <laughs> It's so cool. If I went too fast and you missed any of it, just ask me questions in the comments down below. I'd be happy to, to tell you what I did, but I was trying not to make this video crazy long because we do have some fantastic other videos in the hop. You guys, we have a ton of cool inspiration. And if you're ready to see more, I've got links below to the next stop in the hop. I've also got a link to my blog where you can find the whole list of everybody hopping along with us and also the, the products that I used. I've also got more information on my easy lights. They are super simple to use. Um, don't forget to hop along with us because if you leave comments along the way, you'll be entered for your chance to win a couple cool prizes. We've also got a 15% discount code and it's one code good for both shops. It's down below, but do hurry because it's a limited time. And if you like today's video, please go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. And I'm going to drop a playlist here with other videos in the hop, as well as some other interactive cards. Thanks for watching!